women of color have been trying to navigate and have ownership of their bodies since slavery. I grew up in Chicago on the South Side. We dealt a lot with poverty, especially after my dad was killed. Poverty, food insecurity, unstable housing, things like that. And then I headed off to a Catholic girls school and we weren't gonna get any comprehensive sex education. And so I didn't know about my body. I didn't know about birth control. I didn't even really know, understand my period. The first time that I got pregnant, I had just gotten out of high school, so I was like 17. You know, I was not gonna be a mom. So I decided to have an abortion. I was very, very lucky that I didn't have to worry about trying to come up with the money. Uh, my mom and the guy paid for it. Yeah, that was, that was luck. And so I did have another relationship. He was a much, much older guy, and it was just an unhealthy relationship. He wasn't using condoms, and, and he wasn't going to use condoms. And so I'm 18, and this guy is 29, 30, Am I more powerful than him in our relationship? I don't think so. He was abusive. This didn't feel like a good love. I was always crying. I was always upset and unhappy. Um, and so I was making the decision that I was going to be leaving this relationship at some point, and I got pregnant again. And, you know, at the very beginning, I thought about abortion, but I, you know, something in my head, I was just like, you know, I, I'm going to carry this pregnancy to term. I started writing my son love letters um, when I was pregnant with him. I just, I really wanted him. I was gonna to try to work it out with the, the father. And so we got this apartment, but it was horrible. Yeah, I ended up getting a, a order of protection. You know, my son, he didn't ever go hungry, so we made it on a prayer. <laughs> we made it on a prayer. The birth of my second child came after I, you know, I had met somebody, got married, and I actually, you know, I planned her. There were a series of things that happened to put me on the path to become a professional activist in the pro-choice movement. The conversation tended to center on just abortion rights, and women of color were like, that's not the totality of our lives. There's other things that are happening here. Reproductive justice is the merging of reproductive rights and social justice. The ability to carry a pregnancy at the term, the ability to terminate that pregnancy if the, the woman is not ready, and the ability to parent the children that, that she already has with all the adequate and necessary supports needed to do those things. And so that is really the reproductive justice model. Every woman has the right to make that decision for herself. <laughs> 